intriguing game. I think on form, Jamie just edges it, but anything can happen in this game now. Very tight. We're about to find out. Yeah, well, these two, only one place separates them in the world rankings. 23 Cave and 22 Justin Pipe. But in the head-to-head -head stats, it is Caven who dominates it, really. He's won eight of their 12 meetings. 78! Which surprised me because, you know, they haven't played for a while. To be, there, there was one game last year where they, they met in Venera in the Dutch Darts Masters. But prior to that, you're going back to like 2012 and 13. And that's really when Justin Pipe was at the peak of his powers. He was winning tournaments and you know, he was a danger in everything. Three major semi-finals for Justin Pike. He's been very dangerous for quite a few years now. And I think a lot of people are of the opinion that Jamie Caven is a prestigious talent and has maybe not achieved on TV what he should have. But mm. the good thing about Jamie is that he's been at the top for quite a number of years now, but I still don't think we've seen the best of him. I, I agree. There have been a number of opportunities for Jamie Caven to go on runs deep into big TV 45. tournaments. And he's just, I mean, the narrowest of margins, he's missed out on making a, a big semi-final. Five so major quarterfinals, and he's been being beaten in deciding legs and, you know, left on finishes when his opponent goes out. It's, it's just been very, very frustrating for him. Well, we're talking about the calibre of a player of Jamie Caven, and... The fact that he's made those quarterfinals in majors and we say that's an underachievement. Mm. That's testament to the, the kind of dark player that a lot of people think Jamie he is. Jamie McCarr, 143. Well, they've got 13 ranking titles between them as Caven looks at 143. And what a way to start the evening session. This he's is 143. Leg. Check Jamie out. Caven. Jamie Caven, 12 darts at a break. First. Here Give come on. the big boys. What a great way to start the evening session. Very impressive. And you mentioned that he's got a pretty good record. In a head-to-head, -head. a lot of people don't against Justin Pike because of his slower pace. And it obviously suits Jabba. Yeah, Jamie, it was not on this stage, of course, because a couple of years ago we were playing elsewhere. That was in uh, Salzburg that we played the Austrian Darts Open. But Jamie went all the way to the final. It was Vincent van der Voort who did for him in that final. It was an incredible tournament for Caven. Every single match he was involved in went 6-5. He beat Phil Taylor, Stephen Bunting, Terry Jenkins, and Peter Wright on the way to the final. 5-2 up in that final, and then loses 6-5. Heartbreaking for Jamie. I mean, that was, that was basically his tournament. I remember looking at the stats of that tournament thinking, wow, this is his. 60. And unfortunately, he didn't get over the line. But you mentioned something there, Dan, that that tournament was in Salzburg. Well, when he won the Austrian Open a few years ago, that was also 59. in Salzburg. So he obviously has a, an affiliation with that town. Let's see if he can bring that game to Vienna. Have you found that there are certain locations where you've played well before and then you know going in there, I don't like this place, I, I've, I've won games, I've got good memories, it automatically puts you in a positive 16. frame of mind and that, you would think, increases your chances of playing well. Yeah, from a mental perspective, that's absolutely true. I mean, for me, on the Pro Tour, it was at the Crawley venue at mm. the K2 Arena there, which unfortunately 59. we don't play at anymore, <laughs> even, <laughs> even though they moved it when I moved very close to it. <laughs> uh, I never played well at Blackpool. Mm. I was never comfortable there, but I always felt really comfortable in Dublin uh, playing in the, the Grand Prix. I never had great results there, but I always felt like I was going to play well. 45. And, of course, the Circus Tavern, which uh, I still hold an unbeaten record there. And that will, I'm sure, will remain the same. Well, never know. Maybe, maybe something will go back there one day. You never know. 125. And these big boys have brought it tonight. And Jamie Caven certainly has. He's come up to win this. Just seems just having a word with the ref, Paul Hinks, there. And I'm not quite sure what he was concerned about. I don't know if it was some noise in the crowd or... 92, if he Jamie Rupert, 75. Or something. His darts don't appear to be going in in a different way from normal as Caven looks at 75. Game and shot on his second this for finishing from Jamie, Jamie Caven. Caven. Just two minutes, just, in, just, in just two minutes. That is a draft. You can hear Paul Hinks saying so. There's evidently a door that's open. And I, I didn't really notice any difference in how Justin's darts were going into the board, but... 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The third leg is just in the throw first. Game on. It's very good that it's been addressed, though, mm. and th it's something that, you know, when you come to a new arena, or even, even arenas that you've been at in the past, we've seen at Alexandra Palace that sometimes doors get opened, the vents become open. It's good that the referees are in tune with what the players are feeling, and they can fix things really quickly. But Jamie's got a jump on Justin here. 91. Seems to be in a lovely rhythm. Looks very, very comfortable. Ninety-nine. This game's definitely not over yet, though. No, certainly not. Caven is uh, sharing a room this weekend with Simon Stevenson from down that part of the 93. world. Ninety-three. Pipe from Taunton. Stevenson from Plymouth. Stevenson is already in round two on his debut, seeing off James Wilson earlier this afternoon. And from experience, when you're sharing with someone who's already won, you want to make sure that you go back to that room tonight as a winner yourself because it'd be a slightly bipolar atmosphere in there. Particularly if you're the senior pro. Indeed. 100. Just in your car, 127. I have to say, though, Tough draw against Jamie Caven in the first round. There's a couple of real stinkers tonight, isn't there? Mm. Steve beating against Van der Voort, that really sticks out for me. But this is a very tough game for both players. Jamie looks a bit more relaxed, in my opinion. 59. Well, he's behind in this leg, but a 140 puts pressure on, or even better. Oh. Looking at a 177 to leave tops. 139, just when you require 68. And there is pressure applied. Now, pipe. 68. Now, does he stay there for double 14, or does he switch across? He does. Quite likes these ones on the side of the board. Double 14 and double 13, 40. but he can't pin the mensch. Jamie requires 78. So, Caven, his finishing has been flawless so far. It could be again. Look at this. Double six for three nil and a double James break the and Jamie Caven, Jamie Caven is in danger of running away Four with this. Jamie to throw first. Game on. Notice that Jamie's using a, a, a slightly different flight over the last 12 months. He used to be the advocate of the pear-shaped flights. One out of but when you're throwing darts this good with the new shape, when they're landing a little bit more upright, I think he's had a look into the sort of trying to get it more stacked together technique, like the, Vi the Michael Van Gerwens, the Chizzies, the Andersons, that have got to find that real power score. And I think these flights have actually done it for Jamie. Well, he has had some recent success as Jamie. He made a final of a Players' Championship event 99. two or three weeks ago. He was only beaten in that final by Gerwin Price. But that was his first final since he made the final in Austria two years ago. So a significant step forward because 97. he'd been struggling for a while. Results don't tend to lie. When you're making finals of anything that's professional, 140. it's a pretty good indicator that you're playing pretty good darts. Man, he has taken it to Justin Pipe in this one. Well, we saw a 122 earlier in the day. 95, Jamie require 122. Someone didn't actually go for the bullseye. Jamie not having to go the 18s route on this one. 65. Very handy when Justin is in no man's land. Yeah, and going for the 25 of that last dart, which means he's going to come back with two darts guaranteed at a double. Just sensible use of the... 85, ball Jamie Absolutely, require 57. Especially the way he's been hitting his doubles in this match. He's been clinical. Double ten. Yeah, Game shown the full flag. Jamie Caber. Four nil. Looks like he's just in the third first. Game on. So we anticipated a tight match, and how wrong we were. Well, as things stand, it is anything but. One hundred and forty. As professionals, you have to know that even in these positions, you can still win. Things can change, and there's one professional 82. on the circuit that knows that. That's Jamie Caven. He's had people come back on him from a way, way back. Yeah, I remember a game with Simon Whitlock at the European Championship. 
believe he lost seven straight legs to get pipped in a decider. That was one of those nearly moments for him in a big TV tournament. I hasten to bring that up because I know that Jamie doesn't like to talk about it, but it's one of those situations that describes a, a situation that really we very rarely see. Mm. The other one was also involved Simon Whitlock with Andy Hamilton at the Winter Gardens, which was just as dramatic and maybe just as unbelievable. Whitlock has a habit of getting involved 16. in those games. I remember Ted Hankey did it to him at the Grand Slam as well, and it was, it was just... Simon Whitlock is a player who seems to be able to get on these incredible runs of legs. 95. But can also see it happen to him, and he doesn't know how to arrest that momentum. I was saying this last week during the Darts World Cup in Frankfurt that the Aussies always seem to bring the drama, <laughs> and they did with the Dutch last week. What a game that was. 140. On the nine daughter in the penultimate leg. Ticket to a decider, then the Dutch are on the nine daughter. Ridiculous stuff. Real chance 60. for Pike to get his first leg Just on the board here. 76. With Caven on 130, the way he's finishing, you do not want to give him a shot. My thoughts exactly. I think this needs to go because Jamie's going to have a pop at this 130. Staying up top. Double 18 to get on the board. Gets Each on the board. the fifth leg. Just in five. Six leg is Jamie to throw the first. Game one. Doubling in this game has been very, very good. 91. Quite contrary to the way that some players were playing earlier in the day. Lots of double trouble. This has been absolutely clinical. If Justin's going to get back in this match, he needs to keep that first start going like that. 97. You see those averages there, 99.97. That's about as good as we've seen so far. There's still a bit of time to go in this one. We'll see if Caven can keep that. It might go up. It might go up, you know. Because it's the scoring that hasn't been firing on all cylinders for Jamie Caven. The finishing has been excellent. There you go, 12, 17, 15, 15 for Caven. Pipe hitting back with a 15 darter of his own. Jamie looks in great touch to me. Looks relaxed, 100. composed, focused. As does Justin. I think it's this time in the season where you start finding out where you stand. And these guys want to push on. 100. Going towards the world match play and going into... The summer break, you want to leave something of a mark on 2016 before August. Yeah, well, these guys, you know, they're not in the top 16 in the world as things stand. So Jamie they know Rupert, they've got to get in there on the one-year order of merit if they want to be in big tournaments. And that puts a bit of extra pressure on them as... 65. Haven Just a new score 164. These are the kind of shots that can turn games if they go in. Just a little bit low from Justin. Caven will come back looking at 25. 94. Top for a 5-1 lead. A commanding lead. Oh, well, he's at the 7. Oh, he's at two. the Game yeah, shot on the 6th leg. <laughs> That's one way to Jamie go. Jamie Caven. We know that he Sounds likes like the funny ways to go first. sometimes. Game on. He once had a 9 daughter with 154 checkouts. Still can't remember exactly how he did it, but it was very unusual. I think it was, uh, he went the, he used the bullseye, didn't he? Is that right? 167, 180, 154. Yeah, I think he may have gone. Hmm, I think, I'm sure he used the bullseye in the checkout, but I'll, well, I'll have to look that one up. But yeah, he does do things his own way, Jamie Caven. A little word in my ear. So he finished with 154 and double 17. Yeah, two triple 20s right. and double 17. I'm not sure we'll see that one again. Hey, look, they're all the same size. Justin. 100. Not to put the hex on Justin here, but if you're looking for an outside bet for this tournament, Jamie Caven's looking pretty good. Well... He's got Dave Chisnell up next if he can get through this. And Chizzy has been the runner-up in the last two European Tour events and he's playing some very, very good darts again and Justin is not a happy man. And I don't know if that's a draft or if it's his own throw or if it's just the fact that he knows he's got to win five legs on the spin. But Could be a combination of a few things. Yeah. The 55. game hasn't gone his way. He's visibly upset. 
game is not over, but I think the composure of Jamie Cave and, and the front running that he's showed has been 100. very, very good. Now, I know these two, I'm 99% sure they get on. I don't know anybody who doesn't get on with Jamie Caven, to be honest, and Justin Pipe, even though he's wearing a pretty mean snarl at the minute, is one of the friendliest Fizzy. guys you hope to meet. But Jamie will be absolutely delighted to see Justin Pipe struggling like this, won't he? There are no friends on stage. Absolutely not. Are you, he knows that he's cracked Justin mentally. 58. You're right. Both guys are great, but Justin is angry at himself. He's not angry at Jamie. He's not angry at the referee or anybody else. It's just himself because everybody wants to get the best out of themselves. They want to squeeze the lemon for as much as it's got. 21. Genuinely Jamie not McCall, turned up 160. Tonight. Yeah, this has kind of fallen apart for Justin Pipe. He is prowling around like a caged animal at the back of the stage. But Caven's looking to put him out of his misery. And he very nearly did, but he'll come back with three darts at tops. And Justin Pipe is throwing at double speed right now because I think he sees 100. the end in sight. Jamie, you require Tops 40. for Caven for 6-1, a game we thought would be close. But Caven has just romped it. Double 10. Double 5. Yeah, and there it is. Much. And Jamie that Caven. is job done for Jamie Caven. There's a shake of the hands, but I don't think Justin Pike will be a particularly happy bunny tonight. Good luck, Simon Stevenson, for sharing a room with him.